right, I'm going to fix my screen up so I can uh, see the people I need to see. Um, and thanks a lot for coming. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And make sure that uh, you're able to uh, to see that um, LinkedIn beyond the profile. So uh, if someone can give me a thumbs up to let me know that you can see the slide set. Got we it. Can, thank you, thank you, Lori. See it. It's small though, David. Is it okay? Let me yeah. move a couple of things around. Thank you for letting me know. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna move a couple of things. Full size, and I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. And uh, one other thing that I need to move. And let me share my screen again and make sure that you're going to see the right version. Okay, so I'll ask again, uh, Lori, uh, someone could give me a thumbs up that you can see the, the slide linked in beyond the profile. Great. And hopefully it's larger for you now. Um, I don't have this in presentation mode only because I'm going to be swapping back and forth to show you live what goes on in LinkedIn. So let me uh, let me get started. Um, again, thank you. I am uh, David Robbins. Um, I've been working at uh, JVS, Jewish Vocational Service, for over 11 years. I'm now the senior instructor for the Job Search Accelerator program, which I'll tell you about in just a minute. Um, JVS has been around for over 40 years and our whole value system, our whole purpose is to help build people, help people build their in-demand skills, make connections, build a career in the Bay Area. Um, we've been around for over 40 years. We provide free job training services for unemployed, underemployed people uh, to build those in-demand skills. We're funded by government and private donations and corporate donations. Um, we are a completely non-sectarian organization, even though the J stands for Jewish. Um, that's the way it was founded uh, over 40 years ago for a particular immigrant population, but it has always been non-sectarian and we accept everyone and we're, we're very invested in DEI and moving through those communities as best we can. We're headquartered in San Francisco and some programs are offered in, around the Bay. Right now, our offices, like the library, our offices are closed. And we, um, we're doing everything uh, right now over Zoom or uh, other virtual environments. So I just wanted to let you know what, what we offer. There are a number of programs that we offer. Uh, some of them are skills-based uh, in healthcare, technology, uh, utilities, and you'll be getting this slide set after the program. So you'll be able to look at this in more detail. Uh, I represent actually the Job Search Accelerator program. Um, these other programs are actually based on particular industries, but the Job Search Accelerator program is what we call industry agnostic. <laughs> it's not based on any particular industry. We have people who attend and have been attending. We've been uh, delivering this program for, for um, a, a few years now. Uh, we have people who are in all different industries and looking for um, their particular A job, the, their ideal position. We also offer public workshops, also free to the public. Um, we have uh, a high school program and we have career coach services. We have only one service that's uh, a paid for service and that is to meet with our primary career coach. The Job Search Accelerator program is, as I said, industry agnostic, but what we offer there, Job Search Essential Training, it's a two week program. Um, what you're gonna do is actually grow with a, a group of uh, peers and you're gonna build a cohort. 
And then uh, we offer career coaching after graduation. We have mock interview, resume review, cover letter, and networking skills. And we continue teaching weekly in, uh, in different organizational uh, environments. And we also offer career advising that, that are free to those that graduate the program. Right now, applications are open and there's information on this link. We also have the public workshops and here are some of the titles of what we offer in public workshops. We do have a LinkedIn, LinkedIn beginner and LinkedIn advanced. Um, and then things that we need to do in, in terms of where we're all invested in this uh, staying safe with COVID interviewing via Zoom. Um, and you could also chat with a career coach and reboot your resume. So again, information on the workshops, there's a, there's a link there that you can get to later. But I don't wanna take any more time about JVS. Let's talk about why you're here. And that is LinkedIn. And I, the reason it's called Beyond the Profile is that I've already offered a program here at the library on the profile and just focused on optimizing that profile, which is a very important part of networking, a very important part of using LinkedIn, a very important uh, for a, for you to have yourself out there so that recruiters can find you. But that takes up a whole session just to talk about the profile. So this is beyond the profile. So we will not talk about how to optimize the profile. And uh, if you have questions about the profile, hang on to them for another workshop um, or come to the JVS workshop uh, on, on LinkedIn. But I really wanna get to a couple of other things that are real important. Um, we're gonna focus, instead of on the profile, we're gonna focus on these two items, uh, networking and job search. Uh, LinkedIn was designed not as a job search application. It was designed as a networking application. And it still is a premier networking application. So um, since it's a networking application, we teach it for job search. And I think you can guess why. Um, networking is one of the premier skills that you want to develop in order to be successful in your job search. So we're gonna talk about networking and then we're gonna talk about job search, but the reason networking comes first is that the job search portion in LinkedIn um, has an advantage over job searching at any other uh, of the job boards that are out there. And that is that you're building a network and then you can use that in your job search. So that's where I'm going to focus when we get to that. Um, you know, why is it important to talk about networking is because of this. And, you know, this is a, I'm using a number of slides that come directly from LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn Coaches uh, is in partnership with JVS. Um, they, they said statistically from, from what they get, gather from their database and LinkedIn has over 700 million uh, registered users in their database, 50% of hires result from a personal connection. Um, we've actually heard that that's even closer to 80%. But definitely um, people who know people who know people, that's what a network is really all about. So I wanna first then talk about the networking structure within LinkedIn. And this is how they built their structure. And I'm sure some of you are already familiar with this, but let's make sure that people can see this. This is the beginning of the power of networking, right? Um, so woman in the middle has made connection with three other people. Um, you invite people to connect with you or you accept invitations from people who invite you to connect with them. But recommendation from us and also from LinkedIn is you should be connecting with people you know who know you. Uh, some people wanna go for the big numbers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite everybody. I, I find a business card on the street. I'm gonna invite that person to be part of my LinkedIn network. The problem for job search is that that will not, so, sorry, I have a, I wanna make sure my door is closed here. I'm not disturbing others in the house. Um, connecting with people that you don't know will not help you in your job search. Uh, it'll give you good numbers, but that's um, uh, quantity, not quality. You want quality 
connections. You want people who uh, you ha have to know something about them so that they know something about you. And I'll show you why that's important with the next couple of slides. Um, so here, uh, by connecting with three people that this woman knows, right away, she has three people in her network. Um, now, the other thing that's important is that that first degree connection is someone you can uh, direct message with. So anyone else in your network, we're gonna show you how that network, network grows. Um, you can still only direct message with people in your first level. Now, if you have a premium account, you could connect with anybody, but you still don't know them. So it's just like getting an email. If you've gotten emails from strangers, sometimes all you do is delete it. Uh, so let's talk about how important that first degree is because here's the growth. The growth model is each of the first degree connections in this initial uh, network has two of their own first degree connections, which means for the woman in the middle, those are her second degree connections. Now she has nine people in her network. So it grew from three to nine without her really doing anything. Okay. Um, now, as I said, you can only direct message people in your first level. So um, hopefully you can see my cursor. I didn't make a large cursor, but if you could see my cursor, um, if, if this woman in the middle wants to talk to this gentleman here because he might have a, he might be in a position that she wants to learn more about, she can't direct message to him, but she can ask this woman who's her first degree connection and send a direct message saying, will you please help me get introduced to this person? And since this is her first degree connection, she could send him a direct message. So there's where the importance of that first degree is of people that you know who know you, so they will become an ally and help you connect with others in your network. Um, just thinking of the numbers, if she had 30 first degree connections and each of those people had 30 first degree connections, her network now grows to 900 geometric. And she may eventually have 100 first degree connections and each of her uh, connections has 100 degree connections and now she has 10,000 people in her network. Now, I've been on LinkedIn since 2004, and I'm a very cautious connector. I only do connect with people I know. Sometimes they're my students. Sometimes they're people I met at a, a conference. Um, and sometimes they're people that I, are my colleagues. Uh, but I have uh, about 900 connections. And if each of my connections has 900 connections, you could see that we're getting into, into um, not only triple digits, but you know we're, we're getting into the millions of people in your network, all of them reachable through that first level, that first degree connection. Uh, so after the second degree, you do have uh, being tracked by LinkedIn, a third degree. So these are again, people who might be able to uh, help you in your job search, but again, you're gonna go through your first level connection who's gonna help you with that second degree, which is gonna then connect you to that third degree. So that's where uh, the structure of LinkedIn becomes really important to understand as we then go through what is networking with LinkedIn. So you've developed a network. What can you do with that network? I think that's going to be the real important thing, particularly when we talk about our job search. So you're looking to your network to connect with opportunity. Now, you don't need LinkedIn to build a network, but um, the days of the Rolodex are gone. Uh, all those spreadsheets, you can keep a, a whole list of contacts, but here LinkedIn keeps it for you and also uh, makes it easy for people in your network to communicate with one another. So you have the opportunity uh, to message connections, asking for assistance, asking for help, um, asking for information. Um, and then from there, you can ask for informational interviews. Uh, we'll talk more about that with a slide later on, but informational interviews, I consider to be the gold standard of job search, where you can talk to somebody in one of your target companies uh, in a particular position that you're interested in to learn more about what is it to be that person. 
And for those of you that are not sure of what your next job role is going to be, because you're still thinking about different industries and different jobs, informational interview is a great way to talk to somebody in the field that you're thinking about, learn more about it to then decide that I'm not interested in that field or, oh, this is perfect for me. And this is what happened to me. I was with uh, Hewlett Packard for 16 years. And when I was laid off, I figured, what am I gonna do next? And I went through informational interviewing, uh, kind of tasting different fields through an informational interview and, and found that the number of the things I was looking at were not really for me. They look fantastic. I would not live within those, uh, in those parameters. So uh, informational interviewing becomes real important. You can also request referrals. Um, if you're applying to a particular job, we'll have another slide just on referrals. You can ask people for recommendations because different again than um, other job boards in LinkedIn, you can actually have in your profile recommendations from people who know you. Uh, um, again, recommendations don't go on, prof on uh, resumes anymore. Uh, so they can appear in your profile because of your networking. Um, for those of you that are new to a particular industry, there might be mentors available. You can look for that inside LinkedIn. But the whole idea of using your um, LinkedIn network to connect to opportunity, you can always add value and engage and talk to people. Now, how do you expand your network? I mean, I showed you the structural method, but you also have to do it as human to human. And it's not as easy as saying, connect with me, because they don't know who you are. Why should they connect with you? So the first thing is, who do you reach out to? So you want to reach out to people that you have something in common with, um, people who have a job or work at a company that interests you. If you're starting to build, which our recommendation is building a, a list of target companies, um, look for people who are in that company and try to con connect with those people. Um, also, people who might be able to connect you to somebody else because they've been in that field or used to be in that field. And you'll find that out just looking at their profile and looking at their job history. So those are the ways to uh, expand your network strategically. But what do you say to these people? Well, you have to, you have to explain who you are and where you found their profile in LinkedIn and possibly if you could drop a name of someone they're connected to, that always helps you get through that barrier of who's this stranger. And then telling them how they can help you. And I'm going to be very clear in networking. Um, the thing to avoid is asking someone who you really don't know well for a job. Uh, that's not their role unless they're in HR, in which case they're going to tell you to file an application, send in a resume. But in networking, you want to ask for advice. You want to ask for uh, re references, other people to talk to. Uh, you want to talk about the job you might be pursuing, but don't expect them to come to your aid uh, because they are networking with you. Networking is how to get information but I have to tell you that later on, and again, we'll talk about this as we continue, later on, they may remember you to call you because now they have an opening that they know of. So we have here, and I know it's real small, I'll actually read it to you. So this is the kind of information, uh, if you're going to ask someone to connect with you, this might be an example of a way to do it. So she's writing here, Hi, Dan. Um, I found your profile through our mutual connection, Rob. So right away, she's name dropping someone that Dan knows. Um, I'm currently exploring career paths in the technology industry, and I admire your experience. I'd love to join your network. So that's a way to introduce yourself to somebody while you're asking them to connect. And when we look at a couple of other screens later, I'll show you live how to make sure that you're going to add this note when you're inviting someone to connect with you or asking someone to uh, 
provide you with an informational interview. So there's the example message. Um, the other thing that you're going to find in LinkedIn is uh, at the top in the navigation bar, there's a little piece there that says my network. Um, and if you click my network, it'll take you to people you already know. And yes, LinkedIn knows some people you already know because you either came through the same school or you came um, from the same company, uh, current and former colleagues, current and former managers. Um, so you're going to get to see these people and you notice uh, even in this kind of blurry small picture, this idea of connect. What I want to do is I'm going to go live into my LinkedIn and show you a little more about how this should work and how you can use this to network. Okay, so going to the my network doesn't really take you directly to my network. So let me let me go into my LinkedIn. And again, I just need someone to let me know, is my LinkedIn uh, page up now instead of the slide? Yes, it is, David. Great, thank you, Leah. Uh, so uh, here I'm in my home page. I'm gonna go to my network. And when I do, I don't see my network right away, but I do see people who have been inviting me to join their network. So I have these invitations and I have, a, I have 25 invitations that are outstanding. Again, I have to look at these people first. Uh, Gina and Rin are both former students of mine. Uh, Parker, I don't really know. So I'll look at his profile and see if, if there's a reason that he's asking me to connect with him. Um, some people will say, yeah, but look, he's a learning designer, innovator, advisor. You should connect with him. But I don't really know how he's going to help me or I can help him. So before I connect, I always check that out. But let me scroll down. Um, online events that are listed here. And here are people you may know. So people I may know from my organization, JVS. Um, and, uh, you know, the, interesting. I, I do might know some of them. And here are more people I may know. And then if I continue down, people I may know from University of Phoenix, because LinkedIn knows, the algorithm knows I went to the University of Phoenix. That's where I got my degree. I don't really know anybody who also went there. Uh, it was a long time ago, but you could see all these people. Now, let's say, for example, um, I, I was looking for someone I had seen before, but I can use M. Um, M is working at JVS right now and we're not connected. So I would like to connect with her. Um, if I click the connect button, and this is an important distinction. If I click the connect button, she will get a message right away saying, David Robbins would like to connect with you. Not a great way to invite someone to connect. So a better way to do this is if I'm interested in M. Hyatt, I want to make sure it's the person I'm thinking of. So I click on her name or her face. That takes me to her profile. I see, yep, this is the M that I'm thinking of. Uh, and I would like to invite her to connect with me. Now, if I click the connect button from her profile, I have the option of adding a note. And this is how you personalize all your inv invitations so that you make sure that people you know who know you, that they're connecting with you and they might actually be an ally. So I'll add a note. This is live. Um, I am sorry we haven't been connected. Uh, let's fix that now. Um, I also <laughs> hope uh, one day uh, we are all in the office to meet face to face. I've never met him. Uh, I've also never met my boss, <laughs> my new boss. So, um, so now I've I've actually created a um, a little bit of a of a note to say that we are 
simpatico, where we should be connected. So, hi, I'm sorry we haven't been connected. Let's fix that now. I also hope one day we'll, we are all in the office to meet face to face. I put my name here, even though she's gonna get my name and my photo when she gets this, I'm gonna send it. You have 300 characters to write a message. Uh, stay concise because you don't want someone to have to read, 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 but stay concise, make your point and, and you get there. So that's the way that you would use that prior page in the My Network, you'll be able to see people here who you might know and then invite them to connect, not through this button, but going to their profile and then send a message. Now, the other thing I think that's important here is that you might wanna see your own network. So where, where's your net? It says, this is my network, where's your network? Well, here on the left, you have connections. So these are my connections. So um, I'm gonna click on this. And now I have all of my connections. I have, as you saw, 960 something. Um, I, can, I have this sorted by people who are recently added. So these are the people, these are actually a few of my students, a, a coworker, a former student from a while ago. Um, so a number of uh, people who I've already connected with, and you notice I can direct message any of these people. Um, the other thing that's nice about this is that you can search for someone um, by name, someone who is not, I mean, I would have to scroll down really far to find someone I'm looking for. I could also uh, reorder this by first name or last name, or I could just search uh, by somebody's name. Um, so I might be looking for, yeah, so just as putting it in there, there's a net. So I don't have to look down. We, we actually connected a long time ago. And now I could send a net, a direct message. I can also search through this with filters. And again, this is all important for networking, but the filters are up here at the top. Uh, here are my first level connections. Um, I might be looking at somebody who used to work at um, HP or Hewlett Packard Enterprise since the company split into two. And then I want to uh, connect with people or at least send a message to people that I haven't seen in a long time. I left in 2005, uh, but I wanna build, continue to build that network so I now have these people and each one I can send a message to. This is great around the holidays. I will usually look at the people that I used to know at HP. I've actually sent something to Anka because I noticed it was her anniversary, her work anniversary. Um, some of these people I haven't seen in a very long time, uh, but they'll get a message from me that says, thinking of you at the, at the holidays, um, happy holidays, uh, have a good new year. Um, that little bit helps keep me top of mind with my network. So this is the way that you would actually use your network to communicate with the people you need to communicate with. Okay, I'm going to go back into... Um, my homepage, just leave it there and let's go back into the slide set. And that's this slide, but remember at least some notes for this. Um, make sure that you're going to not click that connect button and send a robotic message to people unless they know you really well. I mean, if it's a first cousin, uh, send the robotic message, that's okay. But if it's anyone else, you want to at least put that note in there. Okay, you can also look for new connections. So that's the people that LinkedIn, the algorithm found for people you may know, but there are others that you might be looking for. You know their name, you met them at a conference. Uh, how are you gonna find them? Well, there's always the search bar and you can always search by uh, first level. You, well, you know the people in first level, you already know them. So you can uh, search by second level, you can search by current company 
and now it's going to go out into the database and look for people that meet this. So uh, use the search bar at the top navigation to find new connections by name, company, location, keyword, however you want to find other people. And you want to make sure that you're searching on people. If you put in a keyword, you'll get, you'll get jobs, you'll get companies, and you'll get people. You can actually select people and only look for people. And again, this is what I said we were going to show, informational interviews. Um, again, I consider this to be the gold standard of job search. It's great to use a warm introduction to meet someone for and ask them for their time. You're, you're asking them for 15 to 20 minutes of their time. Uh, it's important to, um, to let them know who you are. You might also let them know why you're asking. And again, anything other than help me find a job. Right? I'm asking for more information. So there's an example here in the slide. Um, this is Erin and Kate is sending this. Um, Hi, Erin, I'm currently exploring careers in communications uh, and I admire your experience and accomplishments in the industry. I'd appreciate the opportunity to hear about your career journey. Would you be available for a 20 minute chat over the phone or in person in the next few weeks? I look forward to hearing from you. So this is a way that you can send a message to somebody directly who you don't know, but you want to get that um, informational interview. Now, how did you direct message them? Well, again, it could be that you were introduced through one of your first degree connections. It could be that you're sending this also as part of your message um, when you're asking to connect with them. So you can actually put your informational interview message right into your invitation to connect. So the purpose of that informational interview, gain advice about your career path, learn about an industry that you might be interested in or you're not sure, learn about a, a specific company that might be on your target company list, and you're going to build some kind of professional connection with that person. Um, after an informational interview, then the professionals might also consider you for future job openings that they learn of. So they'll usually ask you something about yourself, right? Tell me about yourself. And if you were working on uh, preparing for interviews, that's always something you should prepare in advance, but uh, even an elevator pitch, but something to let them know about yourself and about your skills. I personally do not bring, if we're doing this face-to-face, -face, I do not bring uh, resumes, if they say, well, do you have a resume for me? I always say, let me send it to you because that way I can always customize that resume and then email the resume to them. Now, the other thing you can do in your network is request referrals. So asking a job referral by reaching out to your connections at companies that you want to apply to. Um, you want to let them know why you're interested in a particular role and your appreciation for their consideration. Um, so let me read this one. I know it's a little longer, but bear with me. So here, Kate is sending this out to Seth, who is a program manager in Fixed Def Communications. Um, Hi, Seth. I hope you're doing well. I saw that Fixed Dex is hiring a communication specialist. I'm very interested in applying. This role seems a great fit for me because it needs a self-starter who can operate within a complex environment. Would you be willing to share any information on the position, the team, and what they might be looking for in a candidate? I'd be greatly appreciative. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about my experience as it relates to this role, all the best, Kate. So here, she's not asking Seth to get her the job. She's not asking for anything more than, can you give me more information about this position? that I'm already applying to. Now, why is this important to know? And that is that many companies um, release information about job openings to staff first. I mean, we do that at LinkedIn. So we have an opening for a director position. The staff gets to hear about the opening. We get to see the job description so that somebody can apply internally. Um, and then when it goes external, we're free to actually share that out with our network. Now, why would I want to share that out with our network? 
because if I can bring somebody in that's a good fit for that position, I'll get a bonus. And that happens with so many companies where it says here more than 60% of the workforce at the bottom, more than 60% of the workforce has referred someone to work at their company. And many of those companies get a bonus. And for the really large consulting firms, that bonus could be $10,000 by bringing in because it helps them avoid um, a really blanket job search and going through so many candidates. If they can get someone in the company to vet the candidate themselves, very helpful. So this is again where the network can work for you. They could either reach out to you or you could reach out to someone in your network to get more information. And, and even if you're really close with that person saying, I've already applied to this position, but I wonder if you could hand carry my resume to the hiring manager. So when you have a really good relationship and that's why you want those first degree connections to be people you know who know you, that's going to enhance your networking a hundredfold. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to take some questions on, on networking. So uh, let's, let's stay focused on networking for now. And then we're going to talk about job search in a little bit. But if there are any questions that came in in the chat, um, uh, Lori or Christy, Kirsty or someone can tell yes. me what people have. Yes, David, there's a question from Wen. A uh, question is, should the connections be exclusively or primarily people with whom you have a professional connection? That is, um, it's not a good idea to list your friends in your LinkedIn network. Really good question. Um, I have to tell you, my wife and I use a, uh, the hairdresser. Uh, we both use the same hair cutter, hairdresser, stylist uh, for over 35 years. Uh, she's one of my LinkedIn connections. Now, why would I have someone who works in a salon as one of my LinkedIn connections? Well, because she talks to so many different people every day, right? All of her clients. And if one of her clients is sitting there getting their hair washed saying, yeah, we just lost our primary trainer. Uh, you know, really, I'm gonna have to go through this whole job search. And then Reagan can say, oh, you're looking for a trainer. I have a client, David, who is a, a trainer par excellence. Um, can I put you two together? So I have my dentist. <laughs> I have my hair cutter. I do have my cousins. And I do have really close friends. Um, but again, some of my friends, I ask them first. I say, hey, do you, are you using LinkedIn? If they're not using LinkedIn, there's no reason to even bother or encourage them to sign up for LinkedIn because they're not gonna use it. But people who are using it, um, it doesn't have to be someone who's in your profession because that person might have been in your profession before, or they may be also trying to get into your profession now or in the future. So I, I actually go uh, broader, but still people I know who know me. Okay, another question. Yes, a question from Ming. I'm a freelancer. How should I create my own LinkedIn profile and use it? Okay, so um, we're not going to talk about profile, right? But you can put your profile together and call yourself a freelancer. And again, as a freelancer, you really want to build a network. So if we focus on networking, um, you still want to do all the things that we've been talking about. You know, build your profile. And if you need help with that, there are other classes for that. But build your profile, uh, list on your profile all your experience but then start building your network because the network is gonna be how you um, operate to get that next freelance position or how one of your former um, clients is going to reach out to you because they're gonna see you um, uh, on LinkedIn and may then invite you back again. So definitely have, have a profile, but all the things we've talked about with networking go for freelancers, contractors, self-employed, all of those things are the same. The network is still gold. Okay, another question? Another question, a question from Shayla. I have a hyphen career in two different fields. I don't know how to describe both in my profile. Okay, I know that profile is gonna keep coming up. Uh, there is a way to do that. 
Um, and I, I'm again, um, I think there are lots of classes on how to build that profile, but if we're gonna talk about profile, we can talk another hour just on how to optimize your profile, but you can have, you, your profile can say that you are um, uh, a, a librarian and a landscape architect, okay? And if you have both of those down, they're two different keywords. If someone's looking for a landscape architect, they'll be able to find you by searching on that keyword. And if you're looking for a librarian, they'll be able to find you on that keyword. Um, and then you wanna make sure that you're identifying your, your transferable skills, the skills that relate to both careers. I have a question about the referral slide that you just showed. It said that um, the guy said, I'm interested in applying. It didn't say that he had already applied. And so um, I was wondering if that sounded too, you know, aggressive, like, hey, give me insider scoop on how to get this job or how, how to even apply. Well, and how you, how you might reword that or whatever. Okay. If, if you read the message, it's really not aggressive at all. Um, it's, it's actually, it says, uh, would you be willing to share? So, um, uh, you know, again, this is just an example. You have to take it from there. But definitely, uh, if it said, can you help me get this job? Can you tell me the name of the hiring manager? Now you're starting to um, kind of go over the line of asking this person to help you get the job. That's not their role, that's not their job. So I'm real careful and I, and I teach the same thing at, uh, at JVS. I'm real careful at asking my network to help me not to get me a job. That's, that's my role. My role is to use information and advice so that I know how to uh, apply for the right job. I have a question. Um, okay. Hang on, let me let me ask first. Are there other questions that came up earlier in in the chat? Let's get those, and then I'll take yours, Anor. Yeah, uh, there's a question from Eve. Um, how do you reach out to a contact you haven't spoken with in like 15 years? Do you apologize? What if it's about a job? How do you make them not feel like you're using them? Well, again, don't ask them for the job, right? But nothing wrong with saying, uh, "My goodness." Um, uh, well, you saw me write something to M saying, I can't believe we're not connected yet. So, you know, someone you haven't talked to in, in 15 years, um, first of all, are you going to find them in LinkedIn? Do you have, are they in your network somewhere? And then the, what you would write to them is, I was looking at, a, a, I'm looking at a job at ABC company. And then I noticed in LinkedIn that you are at ABC company. And we haven't spoken in 15 years, which I have to say, I'm, I, I'm amazed that we haven't really reconnected. So I'd love to, uh, if, if you don't mind, can reconnect with you now and, and maybe set up some time where we can talk. I would just go that far. I wouldn't even ask for, um, tell me more about the company, tell me more about the job. I would first build that relationship back. And the way to do that is to say, hey, can, can we connect? And is there a good time for us to, to, um, to talk? And at the talk, if they're interested, they'll build, rebuild some of that relationship with you. And then you could say, well, you know, I was thinking of applying to, to ABC company. Is there any information you can give me about the company? Do you like working there? Things like that. So, um, you know, we sometimes feel that people we haven't talked to in a long time, uh, and then we want to talk to them, they right away feel like, what do you want from me? And, and that could be, and, that, and then you have to be careful about how you use your words. Um, I have found that people that uh, I haven't spoken to in a very long time are really happy to hear from me, right? Oh yeah, it's great to reconnect with you, David. Um, so, you know, you, you haven't reached out to them. You don't have to apologize because they haven't reached out to you either. You're just now reaching out. And even though it's 15 years, I would, I would take the shot. You know the worst thing that can happen? They don't respond. Okay, that's it, nothing lost. But if you don't do anything, then nothing gained. So definitely reach out. But again, if, you, if you're asking them to help you get the job at ABC Company, then they're going, oh yeah, David's just trying to take advantage of me. 
So get back to the relationship, try to get that first meeting and then turn it into an informational interview. Okay, one more from the chat and then I'll go okay. to Emma. Okay, question from Kay. If someone does not respond, what is the etiquette about following up on a request to connect? Okay, it's interesting. LinkedIn will actually follow up for you. Many times they will send, uh, like three weeks later, it would say, um, uh, uh, Lori is still waiting for a response to her uh, invitation request, right? And then I could either ignore it or I can, you know, respond. Um, you can, you've already sent the, um, the connection request. You can't, I don't, I don't think you can. You, I don't think you can send another connection request. Uh, you could try to reach that person another way. And uh, otherwise, uh, as, you, as you saw people who have invited me, I have 25 outstanding. Um, some of them I respond to and some of them, I just go, I, I don't really know this person. I can actually hit the ignore button, but um, if you are sending a message out to someone you don't know, and they hit the ignore button. And another person that you don't know also hits the ignore button. And a third person that you don't know hits the ignore button because you're really spamming people now. Uh, LinkedIn will suspend your account. So LinkedIn is a very private service and they do not like people who are spamming. So if you're gonna just try to reach out to every vice president of every company in the field that you're really interested in and you're just sending them invitation requests some of them will hit yes connect but they will never talk to you if you don't really don't know them and they don't know you and they don't care um, but if they hit, hit that ignore button then uh, if multiple people hit the ignore button LinkedIn will send you a message saying we're suspending your account uh, you can't invite anybody else to connect with you for 30 days um, and then if you keep doing it a LinkedIn will close your account. So be careful about that. LinkedIn has its uh, some really strong values about um, how people use their service. But definitely reach out, you know, more than once if you need to. Okay, NR, you had a question. Thanks. I was wondering if you're already in the interview process and you find a connection at the organization, what would you recommend as a way to reach out? Would it be similar in terms of, you know, can you tell me about the organizational culture? Uh, it depends on the relationship that you have with that person. If it's really a stranger, um, you know, then you would just let them know, um, uh, I, I am, I'm in the, I'm already in the interview process, but I would love to uh, connect with you to, to talk a little more about the company. Um, if it's someone you know real well, that's when you could just be real, really more clear and saying, I'm in the middle of the interview process. Are there any things that you think I might be asked that, um, that you know is, uh, is used in your company that, that I, I need to prepare for? And that again, depends on the relationship you have with the person. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it can be a little tricky because if you offend the person because they really don't know you and they think you're trying to kind of sneak in under the wire, they may actually talk to the hiring manager. They may, they may work for the hiring manager, you don't know. And they'll say, hey, David just contacted me asking me for more information. Um, isn't he already in the, in the process? Why does he need me? So you wanna be careful about how you do that. But again, if you know someone really well, I'm sure they'll wanna help you. Okay. Um, it's getting close to 11 and I wonder we want to talk about the next thing. So if you bear with me, um, hold on to those questions or keep the questions going in chat and we'll, we'll have another uh, maybe two times to, to take Q&A. Um, I'm going to go into my slide set again and I have something for you to do. I, I can't be doing all the work. It's not fair. Okay, here's work for you to do. We just talked about networking, okay? Um, you saw how to add a note. So those are the things I wanted you to see. Um, and you now have an action and that is just, just pay, pencil to paper. Um, and I have to tell you, 
I'm, I'm serious about this. I know some of you are saying, well, I don't need to do this. Um, if you really want to make this work for you, think of three people that might be able to help you with your job search. And you notice he says, a former colleague, someone who works at the company I'm interested in. Um, it could be, um, uh, it could be a cousin, right? But who are some people who will help you and maybe go to bat for you? And then looking at that list of three, choose one person who you will reach out to and write a draft of a message. What's your ask to them? So the use this, this slide set at the end of this program uh, and, and take a look at some of the examples that are there for messaging and uh, start doing this. Uh, you, you don't get anywhere if you don't start doing it. Uh, we, we like to teach at JVS, uh, adults learn by doing and then reflecting on what they did. It may not work. That's good. Reflect on it and figure out what will make it work better the next time. But this is something you need to do in order to see if this is going to work for you. Okay, so while I was talking, hopefully you were doing that. And I'm going to take us into one last thing that has to do with networking before we get into job search. And that is, I wanted to introduce you to where in your LinkedIn environment, your network lives, right? Now, my network shows you the, the people, but the homepage is where your network lives. Uh, you should go every day to your homepage and see what your network might be up to. And how do you do that? In your homepage, you have this uh, list here, which is um, your newsfeed. So let, let me go live just to show you what this looks like. And uh, hopefully I can get back into my live. Okay, here's my homepage. Okay, I just clicked on it to update it because it's constantly updated. And here it says Dorian Lacerda, who's a first level connection of mine. He actually is an entrepreneur in Brazil. Um, and we met when he came to uh, look at some of my classes when I was teaching at um, an ESL school in San Francisco, uh, an international school. And a number of people from Brazil came to that. He wanted to find out more about it. So I'm connected to him. Now you notice his message is in Brazilian Portuguese, which I, I don't read and can't understand. I can get a translation. Uh, corporate culture is the persistence of a set of habits, beliefs and practices, continual learning. Continual learning is a need for organizations to evolve. So he's, he's posting this and I can see it. I may not bother reading it because it's going to be in Portuguese, um, but I could say just the, just the concept there, I can hit the like button. And he will get a message that said, David Robbins liked your... Now, sometimes I actually send a comment saying, um, I was able to translate your, your, uh, your comment, but of course I can't read the article, um, but I, I appreciate the fact that you posted that into, into LinkedIn. And again, just a humorous way to let him know that I'm still watching him. So everything is in here. Now you do get promoted means that this is an ad, right? And some people have ads that are, that are helpful, right? Um, and every one of my first degree connections, when they post something, might show up in my newsfeed. So here I'm keeping track of, um, I'm keeping track of what's going on with my network. And I can keep in touch with them. Uh, Oscar Garcia has presented a number of times at, um, at JVS. He actually built an entire uh, international business as a consultant and speaker all through LinkedIn. And I'm gonna say I liked it because I like anything that he does. Um, and then I can see other comments that people made. Um, Alejandro Villa is my former manager. And I always want to share what she is posting because um, she is in a similar um, organization to JVS. So she's helping young people become Salesforce administrators. So I can share it out. And I look at her comment here. She's just sharing this from the CEO and I can share it out. 
and I would always put something here that says, um, climb higher is a great place to grow. And then I would post it. So now everyone who is looking at uh, Nitsan's um, site might see my comment. And anyone who's looking at Alejandra's site might see my comment. And I have gotten up to 800 views of my comment. Now, this little comment, probably not. But sometimes when you make a comment on somebody else's material, people are looking at that. And now if they're looking at your comment, it means that they're thinking of you as an expert. So this is, again, where your network lives. Uh, there are videos here. There are lots of things. Um, this Boy, he looks just like Cuban, huh? So this is definitely Mark Cuban's relative, I'm going to guess. Um, and he's put something in there. Uh, Leah Olson against my first level, and she's having some other uh, information that she's sharing out. So I wanted to point this out to you. The other thing that you're going to find here is a way, sorry to move fast up and down, but a way also for you to show your expertise by writing an article or finding an article in your field that you want to share with people in your network. And then you can start a post. And in that post, you can share what do you want to talk about. And you can share your article, get, just getting the link to that article. And you could do that here. And that, again, will then have you appear throughout your network in their news feeds. So you have connections that you can do right directly in the newsfeed, and then ways that you can start putting in information to show yourself as an expert. So I, I really encourage you to spend time in your homepage. And there's a lot of really good information in there. I'm going to guess that some of you are here to know something about job search and how LinkedIn can help. So I'm going to share with you a number of slides uh, that LinkedIn has provided. Um, I think that they would be helpful. So um, in searching for jobs, you can uh, use any kind of filters in the search bar. So you can just put something right into the search bar, or you can go to the Jobs tab and use that direct search bar. But either place, you can put in um, keywords job titles, company names, location, uh, a particular function that you're looking at. You can even filter out by experience level and you can filter out by date posted inside the, um, inside the jobs tab. Now also inside the jobs tab, when you're looking at a particular job or you're, you, you set up a keyword search, let's say you're looking for um, accountant um, it's going to show you a number of jobs for accountant. Um, it's also going to give you the opportunity to set up a job alert. And then the algorithm is going to notice that any other job that appears that is for an accountant, they will send you an email. And you could decide, do you want that to come daily? Do you want that to come weekly? Uh, is it emails or do you want it through a notification inside LinkedIn? You get to choose how you want to use these job alerts. And when we go live, I'll show you where the button is to actually create that job alert. Uh, but this is another way to make sure, it's just like setting up an agent in, uh, in Monster or setting up an agent in Career Builders. Um, a job alert is going to pretty much do the same thing. It's going to watch out for you. Um, when you go to the jobs tab, you'll see jobs that are recommended to you. How do they recommend the jobs? Well, again, the algorithm is looking at your profile. They're looking at jobs you've looked at before. Um, they're looking at um, uh, schools that you've been to. And they're, that's, they're just looking at a, a number of different pieces to then recommend jobs that they think you might be interested in. Uh, sometimes they're helpful and have to be, I'll be honest, sometimes they're not helpful at all. They, they sometimes make recommendations and I go, where did they get that from? And I just skip over it. I don't, I don't try to get annoyed that LinkedIn is not personalizing everything for me. 
Uh, they have 700 million people to take care of. And uh, I'll, I'll use whatever I can to the best of my ability so that it's going to maximize what I need. Um, so for the best recommendations, make sure your profile is filled out with accurate work experience, skills, and location information. So once again, if you don't have a profile that's complete, the algorithm can't help you look for jobs that you might be interested in. If I don't put my experience down, it can't look for similar jobs to my experience. Now, for people who have two different career paths, if they're not both in your profile, then neither one of them is going to show up in their recommendations. So I allow LinkedIn to help me. And the way to do that is to have a complete profile. Um, so it has here uh, jobs you might be interested in. Um, so I think at this point, um, let's go live and let's see if I can take you through an example and, and hopefully it works. That's always, uh, that's always the challenge. Okay, so I'm back here in my homepage uh, where, where I like to live because that's where my network lives. Uh, we talked about my network and look, somebody, I'm gonna guess it might be someone from this class that invited me to connect with them. Should we check? This is always fun. Hi, David, I'm in the webinar. <laughs> Your presentation is very impressive. Um, uh, it extends my LinkedIn knowledge, networking skills. Well, thank you, YC2. I really appreciate your comment. Um, I'll get to this later and I'm gonna look at your profile and I'm gonna see how well you're using LinkedIn and then, yeah, why not? That would be great. If I could help you, you might be able to help me too. So um, that being said, please, not everyone in there now inundate me, but uh, I wanna be a point out that I am impressed and, and grateful that, um, that, I don't know if it's we or way, uh, but, uh, they actually used the message because that's what I'm looking for if I'm gonna connect with someone. Tell me why you wanna connect with me. Okay, uh, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get back out of this, go back into my homepage and take you where I want you to take you and that is to jobs because I know that's what some of you are looking at. So here are jobs. So I click on the jobs board and uh, right away the jobs tab, excuse me, um, uh, my jobs, these are things I have saved jobs. You can also see a job and you can say, save it. I'm gonna look at it later. Um, and that would be under my jobs. Job alerts that I might have set up are in here. Um, I wonder what's in here now. So here are some alerts that I was looking at. Um, and I can hit done. Yeah, we'll keep those. Um, salary. Um, just remember that LinkedIn has no special uh, view of actual salaries. They're going to give you, again, using their algorithms, they're going to give you generalized salary ranges for the position that you might be applying to. Uh, but don't think that if you click salary, sometimes it'll say you need to be premium for this. And then you pay them $30 a month to be premium to only find out that they're not really the actual salary for the position that you're interested in, okay? But it can help you because they have a nice algorithm that's gonna help you, got, I, it'll help give you some ideas about where things are coming from. Um, okay, so there are lots of things up here, click through them on your own. Um, and then you can search for your next job by a company name, by a title, uh, by a particular skill area, and then always put in city, state, or zip code because remember that they're international, automatically it will defer to nationwide. Uh, so you would wanna put something in here. Now, I live in Oakland. Uh, I rarely put in Oakland. I always put in San Francisco Bay Area. Um, the, not, not every city has a regional designation, but San Francisco has a regional designation. So you can put in San Francisco if you want, but you can spread it out to San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and here are job searches that I've done before. And here it's giving me now some remote opportunities. These are, these are companies that are looking for remote workers. And because I have a premium account only because I work with LinkedIn and they kind of forced me to <laughs> use a premium account because they're providing it for me. Uh, they're providing it with our partnership with JVS. 
uh, people who graduate our job search accelerator program will usually get a premium account for one year. Um, so I have jobs where you're the top applicant. This may only happen if you are a premium. If not, there's still plenty that's here like recommended for you. Uh, so here are a number of other um, companies, but I didn't really call out what I was looking for. So let me, let me put in here that I'm looking for career advisor. San Francisco Bay Area. And now it automatically took me into San Francisco Bay Area. And I actually had some designations there that said I will work um, part-time, I will work uh, a temp, I will work contract. Uh, because I know that most companies hire contract or, perm, or temp, temp to perm. Uh, so I'm looking down here to see are there any companies that I might be interested in, in looking at, uh, any positions, for example, that I might be interested in looking at. And I thought I saw one before that was um, something at Golden Gate University. Again, it might see, it, this is live. So even though I looked at it this morning, it may not be here. Oh, here it is, student advisor at Golden Gate University. Um, I might be interested in this. And you notice what it's telling me right away? One of my connections actually works here. Okay, so now I have possibly an entree into getting more information about um, a student advisor at the school. I don't know exactly what she does. Let's take a look. I'll click on student advisor. Okay, now it appears here on the right. And um, it tells me that this was posted by Divya M, um, which means that I now know who posted this. So when I said, when I send out my cover letter, I could actually say, dear Divya, right? Or hi Divya. Um, and then it's gonna tell me more about the job um, because it's academia, uh, Government jobs, uh, academia many times will put the salary range. Um, and somebody asked about using LinkedIn. I noticed it in chat uh, for academia. Um, it does it does work. There are a lot of jobs where schools are are using LinkedIn to find people. Um, Golden Gate University is is um, has a LinkedIn account, so they are using LinkedIn also. So yes, it works for academia. Um, for certain of the arts, it doesn't work quite as well. Uh, musicians find that it's not really helpful as, as much as it is for, quote, corporate America. But um, biotech, you know, and, uh, and academia um, go along with corporate America. So, so here I have all this information about the job, but I was really interested in this right here, connections. Um, I did go to Golden Gate just for one class, but it's telling me that there are the, all these people. But I have one connection here. I can click on this and find out who it is. Oh, Heather Cohen. Heather and I work together at JVS. So she works as a part-time instructor there. So reminding me of that, I can now go to Heather. She's first level. And I can say, hey, Heather, can you talk to me more about the career advisor position? Do you know anything about it? And she says, no, nah, I don't really know anybody, anything about it. Can you connect me with someone who might be able to tell me more about the career advisor position? And now she is probably connected to more people at Golden Gate. And I can then ask her to help me through this process. Okay, again, I'm not asking for her for a job. I'm not asking the next person. I just want to learn more about this position. I may not want to apply for it. I want to learn more about it. So you can see how the network helps you with your job search. I'm gonna go back. There was another one that we passed that was also interesting to me. And that was um, at Rubicon, career coach. I'm, I'm a career advisor at JVS. Um, uh, Rubicon is a program that is affiliated with the EDD, Employment Development Department. And, um, and Rubicon is similar to what I do. At their, their career coaches probably are similar. So I want to learn more about this. And again, I have a connection who works here. 
So I can go to learn more about this company uh, and learn more, excuse me, learn more about this job. Uh, and then it tells me more about some of this information is only for premium, but it doesn't really help me with my job search. What helps me with my job search is Amabella. <laughs> Amabella and I work together at JVS. Now let's say it says I'm connected to Amabella, but I don't remember how I know her. Okay, well, since she's first level connection, I'm gonna go to her profile and I'm gonna get this out of the way. I'm gonna scroll down um, and it says, do you wanna endorse Amabella for public speaking? It's right away, knows that we're first level connected. And we have mutual connections, 53 mutual connections. So I know we do know each other. And here it is. She worked at JVS um, from 2013, actually from 2012 to 2014. Uh, before that, she was a program coordinator. So she, I know her, now I know, I know her from JVS. And now when I send her a message, we have something that we can talk about. Okay, so you see, again, the advantage of job search inside LinkedIn is that your network shows up when you're interested in a particular job. Okay, hopefully that was helpful, but I wanna take it um, one more step. And that is, what if I'm interested in a job, but I don't know anybody there? We don't have mutual connection. Okay, so let me take you through that example before we finish this up. I saw a career development instructor. I'm really more involved in instruction than I am in career advising, although I am a career advisor and I work with my, with my students as a career advisor. Um, I really like the training part. I've been a trainer for over 40 years. That's what I really like to do. And this is a career development instructor. It's contract, which could work out to my benefit. And it's at Lambda School in San Francisco. It is remote, so I can still work here in my, in my home office. But it doesn't say that there was anybody that I knew and that it's promoted, which is why it came up near the top. They're paying for this to be posted. Um, I'm gonna click on this. And here I have more about the position. It tells me about what Lambda School is about. Here's what I would do. I would work with the graduates of their programs. Um, it's mid senior level. Oh, that's, I like that. I like that position. Um, you have zero connections to this company. Oh, am I out of luck? Well, not really because LinkedIn is a networking application. So what you would do from here is I would click on the school icon and this will take me to their page. So here's the Lambda School. And I can then, I want to know more about the school anyway. So here I can find out about, oh, there's a retreat. Here's company photos. I see they're, they're not a very formal group. I like that. Uh, it looks like they have fun. Okay, this is great. But I really want to talk to somebody. How can I do that? Well, you notice it says here, there are 899 employees from Lambda School on LinkedIn. Oh, that's interesting. Let me click on that. Okay, so I got 901 results of people that are already connected to Lambda School. And here is uh, Austin and Rachel. So these are kind of key players, the co-founder and CEO. Here's a career counselor and here's head of recruiting. Oh, that would be an interesting person. And you notice for each one of them, Andreina Baliash is a shared connection. So I'm not connected to anybody in this organization, but I have connections to the people in this organization. So if I want to um, talk to or try to get information from the head of recruiting or ask someone to help me get my name in front of the head of recruiting, I can click on Daniel, right? And 
I would go through his his uh, profile to see where we know one another. Rem again, re remind myself of how I know Daniel. And since we're first level connected, I can send him a direct message saying, hey, I'm really interested in Lambda School. I see you're connected to the head of recruiting. Um, I wonder if uh, it would be too much to ask if you would let her know that I'm looking for an informational interview. He could ghost me or he could say, I, you know, David, I, I don't really know her that well, so I'm not comfortable doing that. And I would immediately send something back saying, okay, thanks anyway, I appreciate it. I hope all is going well with you. That's it. Um, I don't push and I don't, um, I, I, I really do avoid being aggressive. It's not going to help me in getting a job. So um, this is how you can, again, I can go through all of this, uh, this is the future of learning geek. Uh, this, she's interesting. She's in Los Angeles and she's connected to Shari Tishman who teaches LinkedIn for this library. Okay, I know Shari well. Alex Hockman, who I know actually from another group uh, and he is in charge of the Career Center at uh, um, SFU. Um, so, you know, again, these are people I know who can talk, help me talk to people other people that I want to know. Here's a recruitment project management specialist. Uh, Orlando White and Jordan Medina are both people that work for LinkedIn that I'm first level connected with. So I wanted to really impress upon you that learn how to use your network because it's going to help you with finding out about everything you need to or many things that you might need to, to look for in your job search. And I'm backing out of all of this. Well, I can just actually go back to my home screen. Okay, uh, I have um, I have uh, just a couple more slides, uh, but it's we have we have another nine minutes before we have to end. And if we have to add, ask more questions after, we could do that too. But um, are there any questions now about job search using LinkedIn? And I'm going to go first to Lori, who's been looking at the chat. And sure. I'm going to stop my post. One thing to show you before I get that is, do you notice it says new posts? Um, the newsfeed is constantly being refreshed and it goes down forever. So you want to just try to keep up with it. And I say um, five minutes a day, just Glancing through this will help you keep up with your network. Uh, five minutes twice a day will help you even more. Okay, I'm gonna stop share and take questions. Okay, question from Amanda. Can you reach out to the recruiter at Lambda directly and ask them for the information or interview if you have a premium account? Is this appropriate? Um, you can ask, uh, they may not have any time. Um, we, we have a recruiter advisory council and I ask these kinds of questions to our recruiters all the time. Um, uh, our recruiter from Twitter, it always has 300 resumes in front of him constantly. Um, so he's not going to give an informational interview. Um, so it depends on the recruiter. Um, there's nothing wrong with asking for that, but would be better is for a recruiter is to just ask them if, um, if you know, first of all, if you know the recruiter and they're really a recruiter, because there are people that are that are floating through LinkedIn's uh, universe that um, that will contact you saying, "I'm a recruiter." Um, then look them up and find out who are they recruiting for. Uh, are they connected to a company, or are they just looking to get into your network so they can see all of your connections? Um, so you'll know, be careful of how you do that, but there's nothing wrong with having a connection with a good recruiter. So. If I know that this is a recruiter from, uh, from Twitter, or if this is a recruiter at Salesforce, uh, I might invite them to connect with me and then it's up to them to see what they're gonna do from there. Okay, a question from Jane. Um, if I do not know anyone at Lambda, what is my next step? Uh, just what I did. Go to their LinkedIn page for the company, any company, and it'll say how many people in that company are members of LinkedIn. Click on that and you can then look for people who are second level connections. Because it already said that you have no first level connections, but if you have second level connections, it'll tell you who your mutual connection is. And that mutual connection 
can possibly introduce you to the person who works at Lambda. Um, that's How about it. there's no second level connection? I yeah, think that's there probably, only, yeah. Again, yeah. if there are only third level connections, you could try to look at their profile, um, look at that third connections profile. You're not gonna see very much of it because they're not really part, they're kind of the outside edge of your of your network. Um, and then the best you could do is, is look, look at their names um, and then Google them. We'll see if there's another way for you to, to send a message to them. Networking doesn't exist only inside LinkedIn. Um, it, it's really, really important to understand that networking is everything. LinkedIn just has a great structure for, for networking, but nothing wrong with going outside. When you see the person and they have a job that you're interested in at a company you're interested in, uh, look for them, um, Google them, check them out. Nothing wrong with doing that. No other question in the chat. Okay. How would you, I, I'm wondering, how would you compare Monster and Indeed and LinkedIn in terms of um, how good they are as, as a database of job listings? I, I, we, we do this uh, periodically with our, with our Tuesday program. We give out, we take the 10 top uh, job search uh, sites and, and we have people go in and look at pros and cons. Um, I, I could just tell you that uh, Indeed, very active, nothing wrong with you posting your profile on Indeed. They, it used to be that you could only search for jobs on Indeed, um, but then they started asking you to put your profile on there. And I went, ah, put you, uh, post your resume, not a profile, but post your resume. And I said, well, I don't really know about that because again, recruiters from nowhere are gonna try to contact you. Um, but now they, they really are doing, they also indeed is sending out great articles on job search. So I think Indeed's great. Uh, Monster, I stopped using a long time ago because I wasn't really getting any success with it, but they do have a, a database. And just remember that um, people, companies that are posting on these databases are paying money for it. Um, the difference when you say Monster, Indeed and LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn is the same as those others, except with Monster and Indeed, it will not tell you who a mutual connection is. It will not tell you who the poster was. So um, LinkedIn is a networking application that happened to have a job board. So that's what's gonna be real important, Barbara. Okay, okay. there are other questions now. Um, Amanda asked, um, for the case of this seminar, there were LinkedIn profiles such as David's and on the email, it says connect. Is this appropriate to connect at this time? When is it being suggested? Okay, so again, um, why would you wanna connect with me? What can I do for you? Okay, so you should be connecting to people that you know who know you. I don't know you. And if you just click the connect button, I'll get a message that says, so-and-so would like to connect with you. All right, in this case, I think it's Amanda. Amanda would like to connect with you and I'll go, I don't know Amanda and I will not connect with you. So um, uh, follow me for a while. That's another thing. You can actually follow someone, go into their profile, hit the follow button. You're not gonna be connected to them, but you'll see whatever they post in the, uh, in the newsfeed. For everyone that you're following, you'll see their newsfeed posts. Um, and then you'll learn more about me. And then you'll say, hey, David, I saw that article that you wrote about such and such. Can you give me more information? I'd like to connect with you. That's different than uh, I saw your name, I saw a connect button, I'm gonna do it. Okay. A question from Eve. Um, when can you ask for a referral or for them to put your resume in front of the recruiter? Do you have to do an informational interview first if they are a connection you haven't talked to in years? I, I would definitely do an informational interview or at least talk to them. I would not go to a stranger and say, can you please put, I mean, stranger meaning I haven't talked to them in 15 years and then put, put a message saying, can you please put my resume in front of this person? And they're gonna go, David, you haven't talked to me in 15 years. So I said before, go back and create a network with that person, create a relationship. So the first thing you wanna do with that person is, hi, we haven't talked in 15 years. Uh, I'd love to find out what you're up to. Is everything okay? I remember that you had small kids. Now they're probably all grown. 
right? So you want to build a relationship and then that person would be more likely to help you with your job search. But just having a whole bunch of people to connect you with you, if you don't know them and they don't know you, it's not going to work out to your benefit. I mean, it might, but you know, winning the lottery also works, but um, you, you wanna make sure that you build uh, um, a relationship with people or have already a relationship and then connect with them. Before we take any other questions, I wanna finish up the slide set so you see what else you're gonna get. So let me, um, let me go back into my slide. And then I'm gonna share my screen again because we're just coming up to the end of time, but I don't mind staying a little longer with you. Okay, hopefully you could see this back in my slide set. Um, it says add value and engage with your network. So invest time in your connections and request informational interviews. But first is invest, invest time with your connections. Um, like and share things that you see in your homepage because then people will see, oh, David liked that. I haven't talked to David in a long time. Maybe they'll then reach out to me. Um, join groups. Now that's in the next slide I'm gonna show you. Joining groups is another way to direct message people. So kind of get around that first level connection restriction and definitely give testimonials and recommendations to other people. So um, uh, people who are in your network, endorse their skills and send them a recommendation. Uh, they will like you more <laughs> if, if you put a recommendation on their LinkedIn profile. But it has to be real and it has to be heartfelt and you know th that's going to be important. Um, so the next the next slide is um, uh, went the wrong way. Hang on. And that is, um, oh, following companies. Um, so when you go to a company website, Make sure that you hit follow the company. Uh, the reason is down here in the lower right-hand corner. Rec recruiters, when they're looking at the database, let's say they're looking for accountant or uh, like I did, career advisor, um, they're going to get tens of thousands possibly um, people who have that keyword in their profile. So then they're going to start filtering it down. And one of the filters they use is candidates who have engaged with their company page, which means that you hit, as it says here in Starbucks, you hit the follow button. And then you are following this company. And that says to the recruiter that you're interested in their company because they're interested first in talking to people who are not only interested looking for a job, but interested in working for their company. Those are the people that they want. So um, important to, um, to try to make sure that you're following the companies that could be of interest to you because that'll direct the recruiters to put you up higher on the list. Joining groups, um, you get to groups through the, 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 the dots that are up here in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, you click that down and you'll see groups and or you could just go into the search bar and filter for groups and look to join groups that are in your industry. Um, not all groups are open to everyone. So you can apply to a group. Sometimes they'll say pending and they want to see if you're really someone that belongs in their group. And then requesting recommendations. I, I put this in here because I think it's going to be helpful to a lot of people. Um, but I have to admit, I don't believe the best way to ask people for a recommendation is to do it through the mechanism of LinkedIn. I think the better way to do it is pick up this little um, camera that you carry around all the time. In case you don't know, it also has a phone connected to it, right? I know people think it's just a camera, but it has a phone. This is the way you should ask people for recommendations. Um, Hi, Lori, this is David. Um, I know we haven't talked in a long time. I was hoping that you could help me out. I'm trying to get a rec another recommendation on my LinkedIn profile. And remember we worked on that project together? Um, yes, that's the one. I hope that you'd be able to just write something about that if you thought I did a good job. You, you're not sure what to write. Why don't I send you an email with kind of three bullets to help focus and then you write whatever you want. But if you could do it, great. If you can't, that's okay too but I really would 
be great to do that. And, and let's keep talking. That's how you use your relationship to ask someone for a recommendation. Okay, um, I'm kind of done with time. I'm gonna go back and do some more Q&A. I just wanna tell you what else is here. Right now we are accepting people up, uh, applying to join the Job Search Accelerator program. The next one, the orientation is gonna be May 7th. And then it's gonna be the next two weeks of content and a little intensive work, uh, but all about improving your job search. That's why it's called Job Search Accelerator. More information about JVS is through this link. And my contact information is here. Um, so definitely if you need to have more questions, um, send it to my, uh, to my email, that's okay. I'll try to answer them as best I can because I do have to go back to work after this. Um, so I will now entertain any more questions that you have. I know people are leaving because it's after 11.30. Uh, for those of you that have to leave, thank you very much for coming. I hope this was helpful. I know that the library, uh, Leah, Lori, Kirstie, um, they will send you the, the slide set um, or they'll at least send you the, the video. Um, so something will be sent to you to do the follow-up on this. And um, if you have to leave, thank you very much. If you don't have to leave, I'll be willing to stay for a little while and ask answer any other questions you might have. Okay. Frank has a question. Um, if someone sends you a connection inv invitation and you don't remember them, is it possible and appropriate to send a message asking them to remind you how you know each other? And if appropriate, how do you do this? Okay. Uh, give me that again. So this is, I want to get the, the person that you're talking about. And I just yes. posted my email address in the chat. So tell me again, uh, Lori, I'm sorry. Yes, if someone said- I can ask it directly. Okay, sure. So David, um, so I get a lot of invite requests from people and yeah. I don't always know who they are or whatever and looking at their profile doesn't remind me. Is there a way on LinkedIn to message them to say, hey, would you remind me how we know each other? So A, is there a way to do it? And B, is it appropriate to do that? It's definitely appropriate to do. Um, you know, uh, remind me how we know each other is great. Um, if you have a premium account, it's very easy to do. If you don't have a premium account, um, you have to look at, um, at their, their profile. When you look at their profile and in the more section or the three dots, everybody has a slightly different version. There might be something that says send message. And then you could send a message to them saying, um, uh, I got your invitation request, but I'm not sure how we know each other. Can you please remind me? But um, however you do it, Frank, it's definitely appropriate and I encourage it. Okay, a, a question from um, Alka. How do we ask for a recommendation if we don't have their phone number? And what if we do not reach out to them on the phone ever, like a formal connection? Well, then, then you're gonna, then you could do it right in there. Okay, so first of all, the only people that can give you a recommendation are first level connections. It can't be second level, third level, or or your, your you know, former sixth grade teacher, right? Um, it has to be someone who you're first level connected to. Now, if you're first level connected to them, instead of clicking the ask for um, um, reference button, just go to ask through message and, and send a message to them saying, um, I wanted to uh, talk to you and I realized I don't have your phone number. Um, I would love to, uh, ask you if we can talk a little bit about the possibility of uh, getting a reference on my profile. Now, something else is gonna happen when you're first level connected with someone, there's a, when you go to their profile, there's a contact button right, right there on near their name. Um, they may actually have their phone number in that contact list because um, nobody can see it except for first level connections. Anybody else when they hit contact is only gonna get their, their generic LinkedIn email address. So it could be that you could get their phone number that way, but if you don't, again, if you're not that close with them, send them a, a direct message or use the invitation link. I mean, it's not a bad thing to do. I just think it's nicer to talk to them directly. So you're first level connected. If they're not first level connected, don't bother. They can't send you a recommendation, 
but you can ask them to connect with you. And then after that, ask them for recommendations. Okay, okay. question from Eve. If you're transitioning careers and want to connect with someone in the field, should you ask for the informational interview in the connection request message or wait until they connect? And what is a good reason to convince them to connect with you? Um, there, there is no good reason except for whatever your real reason is. Uh, you know, again, um, making, I mean, you can go to Google and find out, you know, what a great connection request, but, um, you know, if it's something that's generic, it's not going to be great, but um, it, you saw it, there are examples in the slide set. So when you see the slide set, you'll see a couple of examples, but um, if I'm going to ask someone to connect with me that um, I, I really don't know well, I'm going to have to explain to them why I would like to connect with them, right? I noticed that you're working at such and such a company. I've been in the field for a long time. Um, I'd, I'd love to connect with you and learn more about your, your company, your industry. And I think it would be good for us to share information. See, I, I use the share information because it's not like I want to get stuff from you, but I want to connect with you so you might be able to get stuff from me. So that's kind of the way that I would word it. Um, and then if I want to ask them at the same time for an informational interview, I, I would put that, I could put that right into the connection request, right? I'd love to connect with you. I want to learn more about, about your company. Um, and in addition to connecting, if you have 15 to 20 minutes, um, I'd, I'd love to set up a, a meeting where we can, we can talk a little bit about your, I could learn more about your company. So um, different ways you could do that, but that you can definitely ask for an informational interview inside a connection request, but make sure, I mean, the way your question was worded, make sure you're, you're not trying to convince them to connect with you, but explain to them why you're asking them to connect with you. Uh, last question from NR. How important is it to have recommendation on your LinkedIn profile? It helps. Uh, it, will it eliminate you from anything? No. Um, will recruiters look at it? Some will. Some won't even get that far. Um, but here's the thing. If I'm up for a job, Let's say I didn't even go, I didn't look at a job in LinkedIn. I sent my resume into a company. I saw it on Monster. I sent a resume into a company. They like me. Before they're gonna call me in for an interview, what do you think they're gonna do? Yes, they're gonna to go to LinkedIn. They're gonna to go to your social media. They're gonna find out who you really are. And in LinkedIn, they're gonna scroll through it. They, they learned about your experience already because they got your resume. Your, your uh, LinkedIn profile, which we should talk about in our profile class, um, is a little different, but you know there's a lot of information there. They're gonna look at that. They're gonna see your summary and they're gonna scroll down and they might see, hey, you have 15 um, references, 15 recommendations. Wow, now that, that says something. That says that there are people who took the time to write a recommendation for you. So in that case, recommendations could help. Now, when I look at recommendations and I see somebody, if I'm, if I'm helping to uh, get someone who applied to JVS and I look at their profile and I see 15 recommendations that they got, it also says, how many did they give? And I see zero. I now have second thoughts about this person. This person is a taker, right? They would love people to give them recommendations and, and that's great but they're not giving any recommendations back. I wonder about that. So when it comes to recommendations, definitely ask for them. Um, again, they have to be first level connected, but also give them. And some people say, yeah, but if I get one and I give one, then people think it's just quid pro quo. They're not looking that far. They're not looking for excuses. And if you have only one to one, yeah, that, 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 that becomes very obvious. But if you have eight, and you gave three, that, that says something about your, your, um, your network, that people are uh, appreciative of you. The same thing will happen with endorsing your skills. You can list up to 50 skills on your profile and first level, uh, first degree connections can endorse those skills. If you have only three endorsements, it says, okay, 
maybe those were two cousins and, and uh, a, a sister. Um, but if you have 65 endorsements, that says to a recruiter, oh, th this person probably really has these skills. So, you know, this, it's not a, um, you, do you need them? No. Can they help? Possibly. That's it. Okay. That's all we, the question we have. Thank we you. Can, hey, I want to thank you. Um, I hope my staying late helped with a couple of the questions. Um, once again, if you're interested in learning more about JVS or the Job Search Accelerator program, when you get the slide set or the program, take a look at it. But jvs.org, uh, simply go there and you'll find all the information you need. And I did put my email address in the chat. Um, and thank you very much. And thank you, um, San Francisco Public Library, for doing this for the community. I, 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 I love to do this because I love working with you guys. Um, but I really love the fact that you are working to help the community in all different ways. So I uh, just want to add my appreciation to what you do. And thank you very much. Well, thank you. Um, equally back at you, David. We really appreciate your expertise and your willingness to share it with the public. And at that, we'll close our program. Thanks to all of you who joined us today, and we'll see you at the next program. Bye-bye.